In this set of videos, I'm going to cover some key background issues that are essential in understanding ERP research, including Fourier analysis and filtering. These are complex issues, and I'll focus on the basics you need to understand journal articles. Fourier analysis is a mind-blowing concept. I still have a flashbulb memory of when I first learned about it, way back in a previous century. Fourier analysis represents a waveform as the sum of a set of sine waves. You'll remember from high school trigonometry that sinusoids can vary in frequency, in amplitude, and in phase. In the present context, the basic idea is that an EEG or ERP waveform can be decomposed into a set of sinusoids of different frequencies, phases, and amplitudes. You can see some oscillating activity here, but the idea is that you could perfectly reproduce the entire waveform by summing together a set of sinusoids. Here's an artificial example. If I sum together these three sinusoids, I get a complex waveform. But the key is that any waveform, no matter how complex, can be recreated by summing together a set of sinusoids. Not only is this true in theory, but you can actually determine the specific set of sinusoids you need using a mathematical operation called the Fourier transform. Here's an actual ERP waveform and the Fourier transform of that waveform. We say that the ERP waveform is in the time domain, which just means that the x-axis is time and the y-axis is amplitude. If we take the Fourier transform, we can see the amplitudes of the sinusoids that we need to sum together to recreate our original ERP waveform. We say that this is the frequency domain because the x-axis is now frequency. The y-axis is either amplitude or power, where power is amplitude squared. Each point in the plot tells us the amplitude we need for that frequency. For example, we need an 8 hertz sinusoid of this amplitude, a 9 hertz sinusoid of this amplitude, etc. You only need one sinusoid at each frequency. The Fourier transform would also have a phase at each frequency. The phase isn't usually shown, so we'll ignore it here. There's also an inverse Fourier transform. That just sums together the sinusoids shown in the frequency domain plot to recreate the original ERP waveform. I think this is pretty amazing. For any time domain waveform, no matter how complex, we can use the Fourier transform to come up with a set of sinusoids that could be summed together to recreate the original waveform. And there's a unique solution. There's one and only one set of sinusoids that can perfectly recreate the original waveform and you need only one amplitude and phase for each frequency. Here's another example of an ERP waveform and its Fourier transform. This time, you can see a high-frequency oscillation in the ERP waveform, and you can see a peak at 75 Hz in the Fourier transform. This experiment was run using an old-fashioned CRT monitor with a refresh rate of 75 Hz, and it created a 75 Hz noise oscillation in the ERPs. To summarize, the Fourier transform converts the data from the time domain into the frequency domain, indicating the amplitude or power at each frequency. There's also a phase at each frequency. The inverse Fourier transform converts the data back into the time domain by summing together the sinusoids specified in the frequency domain plot. Now that I've explained the basics of Fourier analysis, I want to tell you an important fact that many people don't realize. Specifically, I'm going to tell you one of two fundamental principles about frequency domain analyses, and it's probably going to seem completely bizarre given what you've just learned about Fourier analysis. But if you are paying close attention, or if you already have a strong background in this area, you'll realize that it makes perfect sense. Okay, here's fundamental principle number one. Power at a given frequency in a Fourier transform does not mean that an oscillation was actually present in that frequency. What the? Huh? Doesn't a Fourier transform tell us about the oscillations in the data? If it doesn't, then what does it tell us? In a Fourier transform, power at a given frequency means that a sinusoid at that frequency, when added to appropriate sinusoids at other frequencies, can be summed together to recreate the original waveform. It doesn't mean that the biological signal actually consists of the sum of these sinusoids. It just means that you can recreate the waveforms from the sum sinusoids. Remember, you can compute the Fourier transform of any waveform. Even if you have a transient, non-oscillating waveform, you can reconstruct that waveform by summing together a bunch of sinusoids. But this is just a mathematical game. It doesn't mean that the biological signal actually consists of the sum of these sinusoids. For example, the fact that we have a certain amplitude at 8 Hz in this Fourier transform doesn't mean that there are 8 Hz oscillations in the ERP waveform. I mean, do you see any 8 Hz oscillations? So, power at a given frequency in a Fourier transform does not mean that an oscillation was actually present at that frequency. 
There might be an oscillation at one of the frequencies in the Fourier transform, like the 75 Hz oscillation that we see here. But you can't tell that just from looking at the frequency domain waveform. Whether the brain is oscillating or not, you'll always get activity at some frequencies in a Fourier transform. So when you read a paper that applies the Fourier transform or some related method, be careful about any conclusions they draw about oscillations.